stood in the middle of the road and they're like, yeah, it's after midnight, everyone's drunk or high. <laughs> But by this point in the story, they've been joined by other guests of the wedding. Because other people had had a bit of a drink and a bit of a dance and they all wanted food. So all the way through the wedding, like there was a whole group of them who went up to the window and all the way down the line, no, 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 we can't serve you. So they found the one guest who was still sober and had a car and got him to drive up to the window and then everyone took it in turns to get into the car, place an order, and get back out of here. Like, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that lovely? Like a tiny, like a little nuptial wedding car, like a tiny vehicle with 50 people emerging in formal wear. Love it. They're like, we know what you're doing, but they couldn't do anything. It's beautiful. Good for you, that couple. <laughs> it's just wrong. Uh, I got about, I think I got two or three more stories to tell you, and then I gotta get out of here. Uh, no, no, but uh, there's a band coming on after me, and they're fucking amazing. I don't know if you guys have seen Homicide and Supermodels play in here before, but they ripped the fuck out of the gig the last couple of nights. You're gonna enjoy that. But that's the thing, here's the thing, I love touring America because I get to experience you, it's something that I just, I, don't, I, think, I think if you didn't grow up, if you grew up here you don't really realise how absurd it is. Like you guys have got cowboys. Yeah. Still. <laughs> like no one told them, like no one took them aside and gone, listen guys, we've got tractors now. <laughs> you don't need to dress like you did in the 19th century. The 19th century, back when doing, Back when marrying a gold digger was a good thing. <laughs> Everything's changed, but cowboys are the same. And they're revered, they're iconic. Only Americans could do that. Only you guys could romanticize farmers. Because <laughs> that's what a cowboy is, right? They're farmers, they're the guys who look after the cows. The clue is in the name. <laughs> The, the job of a cowboy is to stop a cow, the wiliest of all creatures, from escaping from a field the size of my country. <laughs> and I can't mock you because you've got cowboys, we've got royalty. And that's ridiculous. That is absurd. Like cowboys in 19th century royals are just like first, minus numbers. <laughs> Did you, like, did you know wherever the queen goes, she has her own toilet that's set aside? There's a toilet before any royal visit. Only the queen can go near this. It's cleaned, it's disinfected, and then there's a guard posted on it. Like, this is the queen's toilet, no one touches it, no one goes close to it. It's a little perk of the job, that's what you get if you become queen, so... Stay in school. <laughs> That seems like a good deal to have your own toilet, but if she destroys it, she can't blame anyone else. You know what I mean? Like the rest of us get to go, I don't know who was in there before me, but I held my breath, I recommend you do the same. Like the, the queen doesn't have that luxury. I think she spends more time than you'd reckon cleaning toilets, just covering her tracks. You know, next time you see her on the news waving, just imagine a glove and a brush. It's her burden. The Toilet of Damocles. <laughs> By the way, that's not idle speculation, I had it confirmed. A friend of mine, she's Canadian, and she worked for a company that had a royal visit. And I was like, is it true about the Queen's toilet? And she said, 100%, no one could go near that toilet the whole time she was there. And I was like, well, what about after the Queen left? And she said, I went in there, <laughs> and I said, and, <laughs> and she said, there was a pube, <laughs> and I said, and, <laughs> and she said, I kept it. <laughs> 
which I've never been so simultaneously disgusted and proud of a friend. Like I've never been prouder. I've never been prouder because you've got to, you've got to keep a queen's pube just to see what powers it has. <laughs> what can you magic with it? Can you clone the queen? Have a whole island full of them running around? <laughs> So it's Friday night, people. Friday. Friday seems to be um. I think Friday's normally singles night. Saturday's normally couples night. I could be wrong about that. Single people cheer. Three of you. Couples cheer. That doesn't add up. I don't want to be mathematically. <laughs> that was about ten single people. About five couples. The rest of you just together? <laughs> like, what are you doing? You're like, look, it's all well and good with the jokes, but the second you're done with this, we can clear out the tables and chairs and lay down the tarpaulin and have the night we planned for. <laughs> Here's a tip for single people. Here's a little dating tip. If you're on a date, at the end of that date, the guy or the girl you're on a date with asks you in for coffee, huh? <laughs> A bad answer is, I can't. It makes me shit. <laughs> a, a worse answer is, I'd love to. It makes me shit. <laughs> You're not going there. It's good to know. Thanks for informing me of that, ladies. <laughs> Was that? What was that, sir? Oh, you've gone quiet now. You can say it again, it's okay. I, I kind of like it when someone heckles something though, and immediately gets like embarrassed about it. That's kind of adorable. Yeah. It's like the heckling version of calling your teacher mum. Oh no, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I shouldn't have said something. Gonna have to move to.